No. Oh, wow. <laughs> Nothing left. <laughs> wow. Where was he? Where had they gone to need to go back to Salt Lake? Well, they need Brigham Young to send them down to the Oh, okay. And they, um, you know, that's the reason in Nevada and Utah kind of had a thing about the tattered things. Oh, interesting. Okay. This was way up in the skinny. His kid said, I think he would cut off his arm. Oh, wow. He was very devoted to Brigham Young. That's really special. Yeah. Well, anyway, he eventually ended up in the Oh, wow. Okay. He went to several different Oh, we're a, I'm a member of the Daughters of the Utah Pioneers, oh, uh -huh. and um, through actually Janine, she she had it was her settled her family um, through the Fosteder, and that's how they came from Denmark to to um, the United States and then traveled. But she had changed her name so many times because her her mother died traveling and most of her siblings. And she had her stepfather go. So she changed her name to Mary Ann. Christine Thosseter. Now Mary Ann. Christine Marie, I think. Her first name she changed. She changed she changed a few times. Yeah. His, his name was Anderson and then she did Anne. It was a challenge. They called me up and said she didn't settle in the so like we, we see her I don't know, I guess someone with a similar name is buried in Louisiana. And they said, that's that's not Salt Lake. <laughs> so wait, and someone wrote it all down and made it really clear of what changed the name here, got married, changed her name again, changed her name here. Oh my God. It's really important to document I see people that will put information in, but no sources. So that's what I feel and why I'm still here, is to check what's there, that it's correct, and that there is a source. So that's, that's what I've been doing. Every Monday I've been going to the library. And my agent picks me up and I work with one of the gals there that's very, very knowledgeable. And it's been a while since I've done genealogy and all new changes, so yeah, I'm... Yeah, there's a Well, it's interesting how you like they have my one hand is male. Oh, no. Well, that's not right. You know, I used to have to do that, and I couldn't put it in where my dad was baptized because they were in Canada, and he was baptized in the temple to the thing. No, because he's still alive and can't put that. I mean, he's not now, but he can't put that in. Oh. Because that, no, that didn't happen, but they immigrated to Canada. Oh, wow. And that's how it was, just was back then. The web? Is that just how it was back then? I think back in there they didn't probably have a phone. A phone, yeah. So maybe the room he was born in the room, maybe she called the phone to the river. Yeah, they've got a perfectly fine one in the temple. <laughs> we just went toward the uh, forum. Oh, really? Oh, my goodness. And then the stained glass windows, they have the lake and cattails and birds and stuff. Oh, wow. wow. And the cherry blossoms a lot through it. Oh, really? Because it used to be a cherry orchard. Is it, is it um, in open house right now? Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. My niece took me to the George River Temple two weeks ago. Probably this will be the last time that I will go to the temple. It's a little getting up and down and that. And so, but I truly enjoy it. One of my cousins is getting married there in January. He's getting married there. Both of them have served service missions. Um, and, and so 
they're so awesome. They found each other. They're getting married, Jordan. River Temple. In like the second week, I think, of January. It'll be interesting to see Salt Lake Temple get treated. I, yeah. You gotta, you gotta stick around for that. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> That would be nice, but I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what? Even if you're not here, we can That's true. Yeah. You just have, you know, you're a lot faster when you're in there. <laughs> I won't be able to keep up with you. <laughs> I think I'm going to switch my toes. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. It's nice. Right. <laughs> in the port thing. The port thing. Yeah. Well, you might need to just, uh, instead of ask for permission, just forgiveness afterwards. <laughs> well, I, where were you? Oh, I was in Switzerland. <laughs> I did good things, though. I did. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing. Hey, simple pleasures. <laughs> oh, that is really cool. She's lactose intolerant, so she wants to have a milkshake when she's resurrected. But she won't be lactose intolerant anymore. <laughs> So that's the kind of thing that the Saint George The Saint George was beautiful. Like to go to the Saint George area and play around. That was my first time. My uh, family, some ancestors of mine, worked on the Saint George and the Manti Temple. Wow. Yeah, they, that's amazing. So, so you're a daughter of Utah Pioneer too. I am. Wow, that's so cool. That's awesome. We went to the museum in Salt Lake. Yeah, my mom's the president of the company. The one who is in the room. With Jim. Yeah, she's um, she's the president of the Joshua Tree Company in our area. <laughs> oh, nice. And they just made a new book of the stories of, of the pioneers, and they have some crazy stories in there. The one through the hole in the rock. Oh, yes. Yeah. They, like, yes, I read yeah, that. Yeah. And then the next one was Breweries in Salt Lake. <laughs> and what the pioneers that the pioneers wouldn't drink water a lot because like it was it would have um, diseases in it. Well, there was but, an, uh, yes, but there was an artesian well uh -huh. that was on uh, nine south uh -huh. and fifth east, and people would go down. Excuse me, pardon me. I'm gonna have you move up a little bit and move over. Just, just because that's the way I am. I arrange chairs. Very good. Just back a little bit. Right. Excellent. Thank you. You're so good. <laughs> I think you're fine either way. By the way, welcome. Hi. It's good to see you. I'm a, I am Adele's best friend's granddaughter. Ooh, double yeah. indemnity. I love it. <laughs> awesome. That's and awesome of you. Oh, wow. She's she awesome. Came to visit from <laughs> California. So. Yeah. That's nice. Hesperia. San okay. Bernardino area? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I grew up in the San Jose area. Oh, San I've Francisco lived there area. too. Yep, I've been in San Jose, San Francisco. I work up there in dentistry. Oh, good for and you. And I work with the Santa Clara Police Department up there. Well, I can tell you all kinds of stories about that area. Oh, okay. <laughs>
I know I, Northern California pretty I, well. <laughs> I miss it, but I don't miss it. I hate what the, the uh, people responsible for the state have done to us. Yeah, yeah, it's not and, very and good. It's such a beautiful state. It is. Yeah. But, you know, people go away. The land will still be there. Absolutely. So, hey. There's hope. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. There are no little children. Oh, that's okay. Um, but it's quiet. Yes, it is. These are seasoned members, I say. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good. A lot of strong testimonies here. been years since they sat at the, the, the sacrament table and so I think it would be quite a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's quite a blessing. Yeah, you get to have that opportunity. Yeah. This is a little off. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we are grateful this morning to be able to be with you, and uh, we all look forward to the cold. No, that, that's not right. We all look forward to the snow. No, 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 that's not right. <laughs> it's nice to see the changes uh, in our weather, and it's, it does help us to get into the spirit of the Christmas time. We're grateful for you to be able to be here to enjoy the spirit of our meeting. Uh, and it is a fast and testimony meeting. I want to remind you to be, refer to the announcements, but I'm going to tell you a couple of those. First of all, uh, the 8th is coming up. That's the last day for you to have the opportunity to donate to the extravaganza for the school. And so if you can do that, and then at that time you will see that they get those items. <clears throat> also, uh, this evening is Light the World, uh, and, um, okay, let me back up. I should have read a little bit more. This evening, we have the First Presidency. They're going to have their message. And so, uh, be sure you tune in to that. And it's at 6 p.m. That's available probably both on your television, on your phone, and if you have any type of electronics, you can find it there. Maybe. I've got 268 channels. The 14th is the Christmas activity, Light the World. And that's Thursday. It'll be here. Uh, <clears throat> we have some wonderful guests that will be here, so we want you to come and participate with us and enjoy. Yes, we'll be doing some singing. Final reminder, uh, I am doing tithing declarations. Uh, if you grab me and we'll set up a time, either that or talk with Kent Southworth, and we'll set up a time to make sure that we accomplish that for you. 
Brothers and sisters, we're going to open our meeting by singing hymn number 136, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, after which Brother John Clark will offer an opening prayer.
Again, Father, we're so grateful for so many blessings, especially the, the atonement and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And we say this in his name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> grateful for the opportunity we have to partake in the sacrament, to turn our hearts and our thoughts towards Christ and what he has done for us. I am grateful to him. We will now prepare for the sacrament by singing hymn number 196, Jesus Wants a Humble Birth. share some of my feelings with you. I am grateful for the opportunity I have to work with each of you and for your friendship and your support to us as a presidency and to me as an individual. I am grateful to you for the example that you show me. Each of you are giants. You are doers. You accomplish what needs to be done. What's fun is we don't see somebody having to say, oh, by the way, you need to. No. If it needs to be done, you are already chasing it. You're always already doing it. If there's someone that has a need or concern, you come together and take care of that. We usually hear about somebody's needs at least four, five, six times. That's because you are ministers to one another. We love you for that example. Maybe one of these days when I grow up, I can be as good as you are. Let me share my sweet testimony of Jesus Christ. I've tried to understand who he is. 
But that doesn't work. But I do know what he has done. I know that he is the Son of God. And I know that as we as individuals, okay, let me say it more specifically. I know as me as an individual, when I turn my heart toward Christ and try to do as he would do, my life is so much better. I bear my witness to you that he is our Savior. Also, that he has restored his church here in our time. I am grateful to know that we have living prophets. Oh, I love our dear prophet now and the great example that he has. He's just a young thing. It's incredible to watch how quickly and how strongly he has led and the great example that he has. And he's still doing. You may recall in the last conference, he had to sit to deliver his address. He says, in the, we found out from the background, he had people running all over so that he could accomplish what he needed to do. And yet, look at the sweetness of his message to us. Think celestial. Wow. I am grateful for his example. I have the sweet opportunity to work at the church, and I am involved in the temple projects. And yet, to watch his hand as he's followed the Spirit to move the work forward and to change the work as we know it. As you have attended the temple, you've noticed the simplification of the process. It's amazing. We're fo focusing on the ordinance and the covenants, not all of the the other stuff that's been put into the years. And I think as we experience him more, we're going to find us coming closer to the simple things of the gospel. I don't recall which speaker it was, but uh, it, she, I think, appointed, uh, pointed out the fact that it's all about Christ. Everything that we do centers around Christ. And as we center around Christ, we're going to do it whole lot better with each other. Well, again, I am grateful for the sweet testimony I have. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for those who serve with us as we serve you. The difficult thing that I am dealing with right now is I don't want this to end. We have such a sweet and wonderful relationship with you. And as I look in your eyes, and as I chat with you, I feel of your love and your respect. And I also feel of that great depth that I referred to before. You love the Savior. We see it by how you live. Now I would be totally ungrateful if I did not also tell you how grateful I am for my love, my way. And Christ of Life is sweet. I bear my testimony to you of these things and do it humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The time will be yours. We're going to have two brothers up front. They'll watch for you. Wait until you get the mic, or you can come up and stand where I am at, and I'll adjust the mic. The time is yours.
that help enhance our thoughts. And I'm grateful to be here in this community. And I'm extremely grateful that we have such a loving branch and pray for them always. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm so thankful, and I want to bear my testimony today for all the many blessings that I have. I have a large family, and all of the children are, are good children, and I'm so thankful for that and the temptations that there are today. I was converted in a very unusual way, and my conversion story takes too long to give it right now. <laughs> But uh, I know the gospel is true. I have no doubt at all. And I know that the Lord wants us to do what we can to share it with other people. I'm so thankful for my family and all the many blessings that I have. And I pray that I will be deserving of this and be able to Thank the Lord for the blessings that I have. He's been so good to me and been so protective to me. And I, I know the gospel will give us a lot of joy and happiness and we'll just hang on to it. You know, I, I just don't know how people get along today in the world without having the gospel in their embrace. And I'm so thankful that I've been led to it. And I say this humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I did have a strong testimony before I even came to this service this morning. Um, I wondered if would any Christmas hymns would be sung, but the opening hymn, I know that my Redeemer lives, is a precious one of mine in my heart and mind. But the last, very last line of it says, Oh, sweet the joy this sentence gives, I know that my Redeemer lives. When we sing the Christmas carols, we're so, so grateful for his birth. And just singing the hymns and the songs brings us joy. And it's, as we sing, any hymn, to, hymn that is about our Savior Jesus Christ, we are stating in voice our testimony because we love them all so much. I have and I have had for a long time a strong testimony of the benefits of the faith that we show and hold in our Savior Jesus Christ. It has strengthened me through many difficult times and I'm so grateful for it. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you have been watching, you have seen a great deal of de deterioration in me these last three months, and it's going to continue. But I want to testify to all of you at the great care I am getting from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
of how they carefully cushion my head every time I go face down on a cement surface. How they pick me up and yesterday gave me a full size garbage can to hug instead of falling. I am. They supply the words when they run away from me. But they're not supplying the names that I'm losing. So if I can't call you by name, please forgive me. I testify to you that God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost are real. They are living personages that are involved in our lives. They have given us the Book of Mormon, which is true, and the parts of the Bible that have not been tinkered with by human beings. And they saved a pure soul in Joseph Smith to bring these messages to us to set up the church in this dispensation. And I am eternally grateful for their love and care of me and my family. You may have noticed we had a pair of crutches this week. And <coughs> my gratitude that will be eternal. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Excuse me, I would like to stand and bear my testimony. I'm grateful for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for the testimony that I have been blessed with, the knowledge and understanding that I have of uh, the plan of happiness, the plan of joy that our Heavenly Father has given to us and that our Savior has carried out for us. This uh, last week, I had the wonderful blessing the day after Thanksgiving of driving down to Cedar City and, and being with my, one of my granddaughters. Uh, I have many granddaughters. <coughs> but uh, as she went to the Cedar City Temple to receive her endowment, and uh, that was a great blessing. Her father couldn't be there. He's back in Indiana. Uh, but uh, I was able to stand in on his behalf. Uh, it was a great experience to be able to be there with her. Uh, she's on the autistic scale, but uh, has a sweet testimony and is very artistic. Uh, she has been called as a, uh, as a missionary, a uh, special services missionary. She's also been called as an ordinance worker. Uh, once the St. George Temple is dedicated on the 10th of this month. And uh, it was interesting. Somehow she was set apart as an ordinance worker before she was endowed. <laughs> but that got fixed. And I'm so grateful for, for the gospel of Jesus Christ and for how it reaches out to each one of us to bless our lives, to support us, to sustain us, to build us up, to help us to be able to bless the lives of those we come in contact with. And that's my testimony today is that I am grateful for the opportunity that I have to serve here with each of you 
did it with my counselor, the secretary, and the elders for it. But, but I'm most grateful for each and every one of you for the wonderful example that you are to me. And I pray that my Heavenly Father will bless you, especially during this sacred time of the year, that you will be touched, that your testimony will be strengthened, that you will have the love of our Heavenly Father and our Savior more rich, more full, more powerful in your souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, do you ever, as you close your prayer, uh, whether it's at meals or in the morning or at night before you go to sleep, do you ever say something that, matter of fact, that you say? I did the other night. I said, Father, uh, only somebody I can talk to about the church that doesn't know anything about it. And then I concluded, went to sleep. The next morning, uh, Forgot all about it. Forgot everything about it. And as uh, this young man and I sat together, why? We had a young lady here with us, not a member of the church. And uh, I didn't think anything about it. And all of a sudden, the questions came. And I thought, well, it's unusual. I didn't realize it's an answer to a prayer. <laughs> and it was wonderful. I uh, plan on doing that every night now. See if that works. We've got some yeah, non members in here, and they're wonderful people. And if they can just give us an opening, 
we can change their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. We thank all of you for your testimonies. What a wonderful spirit we have here in our branch. Interesting is we have visitors come and they chat with us. It's intriguing to me that uh, they say, you have such an interesting spirit here. Oh, this, this is intriguing. And again, it's you. Now, we're going to close our meeting by singing hymn number 202. Come on, all be faithful. After which, Sister Karen Roosh will offer the closing prayer. Before. You what? I sing with her before. Oh. 
I sing in choirs and solos. We just did a choir number of um, I Know That My Redeemer Lives last week. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I got to sing with you. That's what I did. That's cool. <laughs> I guess I will head out. Okay. Is there is there another? Um, Do we have Sunday school. I think. We have Sunday school or um, I think it's Sunday school. And it'll be in here. Oh, okay. So, well, I'm really glad I got to hear your testimony last night. <laughs> it's great that my testimony last month. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's one. Well, I got to hear it last night, so that's <laughs> I wasn't here last month. <laughs> Best friend's granddaughter. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, it's so nice of her to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Sunday school. Good to see your faces smiling, even though it may be a stormy day out there. We're happy to have you with us. Oh, I left my script. We'll start our Sunday school by oh. having an opening prayer by Pat Hinsey. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful beyond words to be gathered here together as thy children, thy daughters and thy sons, that we gather joyfully and comfortably bearing our testimony of the Lord. We're thankful for this opportunity that we have to be taught by a special teacher with special benefits and please help our minds and hearts to be open to the words that we will be hearing, that we may carry them with us as we go on in this week. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We'll turn the time over to our instructor, Brother Bird. Hi, brothers and sisters. It's a pleasure to be with you, and we certainly appreciate you being here. I'd like to have you think for just a moment about what may have happened to you or what have blessed your life in learning patience. Today we're going to be talking about the book of James, and first and second Peter, and then the book of Jude. Next week we'll be talking about, in two weeks, we'll be talking about the book of Revelation. So if you'd like to do your reading and be prepared for that, we'll be talking about that book. And if you'll still have me, we'll be talking about the book of Mormon next year. How about patience? What has helped you to develop patience? Please. Two children. <laughs> mm. uh, both of 
them wanting to learn everything there was to learn and take every class there was to take. And sitting and waiting for them through class was how I discovered what patience was. Please. I've recently been grounded. I felt like the Lord grounded me. No, I'm sorry. I was grounded. Uh, it is okay. I I couldn't travel as much as I wanted to. A car had broken down 200 miles from home, and I needed to have it towed. And yet, there were two wonderful friends who I had never met, but became friends of mine that came and helped me with my vehicle at that time and all these things. And still needing to tow back, but realizing that once I arrived back, there was a baptism of a young lady I'd been helping teach. And she had pushed her baptism aside for a moment and then had decided that next day. And I wouldn't have been there had I been completing my journey and realizing I've needed patience for these months of not having that, but relying on the Lord and realizing he puts me in places I need to be. Well, let's talk about some of the things in the book of James. There are nine things that stood out to me. First, he says, the trying of your faith work of patience. Then he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And thus we have a Joseph Smith experience where he went to see the father of his son after he gave his first verbal prayer. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. God cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempteth any man. Every good gift is a gift from above. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speech, to speak, and slow to wrath. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Pure religion and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. You may remember President Hinckley stating that he lost his mother early in his life and that that helped him be more compassionate and concerned about others. Peter tells us that as he that has called you is holy, be ye holy. Husbands, give heed and honor to your wives. I remember Joseph Smith in translating the Book of Mormon had some difficulty with Emma, and he lost the gift of translation until he reconciled with Emma. Peter tells us that the elders among you should feed the flock. And then he said, I am a witness to the things of Christ. I was on the Mount of Transfiguration, and I heard God's voice saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. He says, I have seen those that had died be made alive again, and I was one of the followers of the Savior that needed to be prompted to be more like the Savior. And as I have been trying to be more like the Savior, I would ask you to do the same. 
He says, we need to bridle our tongues, cultivate patience, rise above envy and strife, resist evil, and use money wisely, and cleave to every good gift. He's asked us to pray for those that persecute you. That's kind of tough. He also said that Christ, after he was resurrected, went and preached unto the spirits in the present world, in the spirit world, that were righteous. And he established a possibility of missionary work for all those people in the spirit world that would have the opportunity of having, again, a second chance to repent. He tells us that we need to be of good cheer. God will have a pure people. Be examples of believers. After suffering a little while, Christ will make all things better. He asked us to make our calling and election sure. Treat people as the Savior treated you. Focus on the atonement and bless others. <coughs> Says I am overjoyed to find that my children walk in faith. God's people need to be of one heart and one mind and help others to all feel well loved. He says we need to look out for one another and help <coughs> those that have fallen off the path. In the Book of Mormon, we read that the people there took names of those that were believing and tried to nourish them with the good word of Christ. If I try to be one to those that mourn. <coughs> We're told that God is one, <coughs> and we need to follow one. <coughs> Covenants help us to keep our capacity. <coughs> we can become more like the Savior. Ask yourself what would a, lo a loving disciple do in the situations in which I find myself? The day of the Lord will come, and we need to ask ourselves what manner of people would the Lord have me be? We can grow in grace. We may have trials now, but when we look back, we will have become more precious than gold. We love him because he loved us first. We're told that we were elect in heaven, and that in his house are many mansions, and he has gone to prepare a place for us. Be holy as the Lord is holy. Be 
get to work and bless others. Christ is the cornerstone on which we need to build. Lives need to be honored. They help their husbands. Be ready to give an answer to any man that asks why you have hope in eternal life. Be partakers of divine nature. Prophets and apostles see things and warn us of those things. And we need to take those warnings and do what we can do to bless the lives of others. Follow the Savior's example. Endure things well. Keep getting up and place one foot in front of the other. All the prophets came through a refining fire. What will save us is the blood of Christ. Ye are a chosen people, purchased with Christ's blood. When you keep the commandments and repent, you will have an ad advocate with the Father through Jesus Christ. To faith, add patience, add brotherly kindness, add godliness. Do what you can do to bless the lives of others. I am so grateful for the gospel in my life and grateful to be able to associate with you good people and to have the blessings that you are in my life. I've watched you take care of others. I've watched you be an example to others. If they could say, there goes a good person. Look at what he does. I'm truly grateful for the opportunity that we have of being members of Christ's true church. We would ask, the, would ask his blessings to be upon us, that we could be the kind of people that he wants us to be. Loving, kind, concerned, and compassionate, doing for others what we can do. Please look out for each other. Bless their lives. Do what you can do to serve others. I would ask these blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 of all the time and effort you put forth on your, your lessons and it shows in your presentation. Thank you. I'll give the closing prayer. Our Father in heaven, we bow our heads at the close of this Sunday school and we thank thee for all the blessings thou hast bestowed upon us. We thank thee for the spirit that has been with us today. And we're grateful for this season of the year where we worship thy son more diligently than we do other times of the year. But may we be purely joyful for all that he has done for us. And we 
What are you going to do with the rest of your day? Uh, would you like to stay for lunch? I would love to stay for lunch. I could stay for lunch, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, it's not until 12.30. Okay. <coughs> so we have an hour. But an hour? It's 11.36 right now. Yeah. Well, um, we can go up in my room or we can stay down here and visit with some of the people at least yeah. greet them okay you could be a greeter she and her husband uh, served um, a mission on Temple Square oh wow and they uh, they lived here and then they went home and decided to sell their home Right. In Vernal or Duchesne area, anyway. Okay. And they did, and they're just, they came here, they, they seem to be very happy. Wow. And that's nice. That is nice. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm really glad you, you bore your testimony yesterday. <laughs> I, got well, I, was, I was about to get up. Well, no, I couldn't stand. I just had oh, just oh. speak loudly uh -huh. and then bring the mic to me. Mm -hmm. But I got a feeling that maybe you should bear your testimony. And I thought you bore it last month. You don't want them to get tired of hearing it. <laughs> I felt that way too. But then also, I said. I've got so many strong testimonies, I need to hear them. So. But I love singing, Hello. that's my testimony. Is that your daughter? Yep. No, this I, is almost. My, my friend, my best friend. She's that young, She's right? I could be her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Not for your daughter. You have to be a granddaughter or daughter. Yeah, it's it's a bit funny though. I've got <clears throat> all kinds of different things because, like Taria, Taria, the youngest of Janine's kids, is close, kind of in my age, because Jeffrey is the oldest boy, my dad, and Roidi before him. Well, Taria is much younger than everybody, and she went to school um, in California. She went. She wasn't. Um, she. She was born in Chicago, but she was raised mostly in in um, California. California, and high school and all of those kinds of things. The very pivotal moments in her life, and when I talk to her, it's not like I'm talking to an aunt like I'm talking to a sister. <laughs> That's the one I need to... Taria, maybe we should talk... No, we shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> or like that. It's, it's fun. But that's just because of being in a big family like that. You have different ages and, and things that sometimes, for me, I, I spend a lot of my time in Hawaii. Uh, I was there at BYU Hawaii And also, with the family, I was the only one there. My parents never came when I lived in Hawaii. I'm still a resident of Hawaii. Uh, so I'd be coming up on almost, I was 20, so about almost 15, 
It's 2011. So. Yeah, 12 years in Hawaii. And so Uncle Nephi, which is a baby brother of Arthur, he and I are very close and and Etua. But my dad and my mom don't know them the way I do. Because <laughs> I lived around them all the time. I could I could see them as, as an uncle more than a granduncle, which they are. But I'd see them go to lunch or I'd just spend time with them. And Uncle Apura, he's grandpa's cousin, he was temple president at at um, the Kona Temple in Big Island, Hawaii. And I'd come over to his house to just have sandwiches. I'd just eat sandwiches. <laughs> and it's interesting when my family finally did come, it was in 2021 to Hawaii. And I was in California. And so I came with them and introduced them to all of their family. My baby brother and sister, who's the baby is 15. She was 14 at the time. And then, or was she 13? She was 20, 21, so she was a little younger. But then Jordan had just graduated high school and he is a valedictorian. And he, really? yeah, yeah. And so he- must he, be a very bright young man. Yes, he is. He's the one on his, and his mission in St. George right now. He's serving in St. George? He's ser Spanish speaking. He had four years of Spanish in high school. And now he's serving in St. George, Spanish speaking. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you get the thing that you think you're going to get, and other times you don't. You know, because I've heard people like that who know a language to get to some place where they don't think they're going to use it, and then they find out that there's a great need for it. It's, it's been a journey for him. It's interesting, though, when my other brother, who served in Honduras, Spanish, obviously, Spanish-speaking, and he, uh, he speaks to him and says, you don't speak very well. <laughs> because it's St. George. Maybe because it's not Honduras. <laughs> but, yes, he's very bright. He's, he's trying... He, I want to make sure, though, he gets into a school that uh, that really acknowledges the valedictorian, his scholarship for that. Um, I think Utah Tech University, or something like that, had given him a two years uh, two year ride, but not a that full ride. Is, that's a good school. I've heard yeah. a lot of uh, good reports mm. about that school. Yeah, um, I think that they. Yeah, they have uh, quite a variety of classes, and their professors are very, very good. Yeah. I appreciated your testimony. Oh, I appreciated your testimony. It's so great when we have opportunities to be of service or that we're just watched out for. Yeah. Yes. So the Lord wonderful. definitely... It's not our plan. No, but, it's, it's, but we need to be we need to be ready for anybody, any opportunity. It, it's been it's Good. been a blessing. I've Good. gotten to meet so many different people, help so many other people that in that time I would have been traveling elsewhere. I know. And and now that was he your he grounded present. me. That I've never been Christmas. grounded before. But I learned what grounding present. feels like. <laughs> it's a blessing. <laughs> but it was a very much a miracle. These guys just showed up. Brothers, two brothers. And they just... Are you okay? Do you need any help with anything? Because people were coming up, but they were just... You could tell they weren't really trying to help. They're just, I don't know, wanting to, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't good conversation. <laughs> I'm busy trying to fix something. <laughs> and they came up and one brother just said, I noticed you need help with that. 
and then he just helped me with that when I was doing and then um, oh well do you need a ride anywhere to get anything mm -hmm. um, I don't want to bother you I know you've got probably things to do <laughs> oh it's okay my brother doesn't have anything to do we just got off work and my wife's at an appointment so it's okay <laughs> and his wife what? at an appointment Oh. Later, he was telling me it was a dentist appointment. And so we had plenty to talk about, because I work in dentistry. <laughs> oh, it was funny. But we spoke, and it was, it was very nice. They drove me to different places to try and find a part for my car. Then they drove me to their job to get the tools that they had at their job, and then told me about what their job is. And they picked up their tools and brought it to my car and helped me with the car. And then I used the tools because I know what I'm doing. Sometimes they didn't know what they were doing, they, but they were trying to just supply what I could use. And then I used all the things and it still didn't work. And then I learned they had told me they worked in, they live in Visalia and I was stuck in Tulare, California. These are very close cities, but I don't know them very well. They're 205 miles from where I live. <laughs> and it was really miraculous that I was stranded right there at that time, because they had just gotten off work, and they go to this place to get a soda. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so then I realized my, my, my best friend, who I'm godparent to her children, and I met her children years ago when he was, her first son was born and now she's had a daughter and I never had met her yet. But she lives in Visalia. And I'd usually call her when I would drive or something or write her a letter. But, or when I'd arrive, I'd write her something. But I've never been able to see her in years since her son was born, nine years ago. And I find her phone number because the phone number was lost with somewhere. <laughs> I had to search for it, found it. And while I was searching for the phone number, because I knew I had my friend nearby, they pushed my car into a safe place <laughs> in the truck stop. They said, oh, people drive the big trucks, so they park their regular car and then they drive off. So it's, it's okay usually here. And I said, okay. And then they drove me to a hotel and dropped me off there. And how were you supposed to get back to your car? Oh, I was I was going to figure it out. I needed to figure it out. But first, I couldn't sleep there. <laughs> so they had said, I, well, there was a truck stop hotel thing, and they said, you will not stay there. That is not a good place. <laughs> and I said, okay. <laughs> so I said, I, I took my wife here, and it's a nice place, this one. Just... Well, and if you want to walk to another one, you can walk to other ones. There's a lot of things going on on this strip, this street. But where you were, that's not a nice place for you to spend the night. Your car is fine, but you, no. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And then um, my friend answered the phone. Well, she called me back. She didn't answer the phone because her children were playing with the phone. <laughs> then... She found the message, missed call, and called me while my dad's on the phone to try and think of towing my car back. And she says, I'll be right there. She shows up and turns out her father works for a specialist of dealing with car repairs and to see if faulty parts and things like that, which is what happened. A part had failed and caused an issue. I just had bought it six days prior <laughs> so my friend shows up calls her dad her dad happens to live with her in that same city in her home he lives there with his wife and and her brother which i'd not seen them since since grade school <laughs> and so it was incredible she said i'm gonna take you home you'll stay with me and we'll tow your car so she drove me with her car over to where my car was. And with her father's recommendation and different, the brothers who also explained different good auto mechanic places, went over and we towed the car 
with my AAA over there to this automobile um, mechanic shop. And then the next morning, they were able to look through the car, determine the issues, and then I towed it back 205 miles. But I had the documentation to to present to the company to to repair my vehicle. And then it was in a timely manner as well as when it happened and when it was reviewed. So it wasn't something in between that could have happened. So I got to meet my godson again. <laughs> and I got to meet for the first time my goddaughter. <laughs> What a miracle. <laughs> so that's where I would not have seen them had this all worked out to me it, driving. Yeah. It would not have happened had I had I gone to work. I would not have come back. She, When I got the phone call about the missionaries telling me that, oh, Yasmin decided to get baptized tomorrow. <laughs> what? Tomorrow? <laughs> she was supposed to be baptized the Sunday prior. And she had said, no, I'm not ready. And I said, okay. And then she said, I feel like I, I'm missing something. Well, maybe you should get baptized. And she said, okay. <laughs> so she decided on that Thursday she was going to be baptized. Or Friday, Friday. That she was going to be baptized. And I was stranded on Wednesday, got towed on Thursday, and arrived. On <laughs> so I was able to arrive and I was singing for her baptism and I was singing um, walk tall you're a daughter a child of God yeah it was special and it was with the other sister missionary and the other sister missionary was a beautiful piano player and so she played piano the other sister sang with me it was beautiful and then I got to speak about the Holy Ghost I believe but it was it was really special and i wouldn't have had that i would have been working i would have been with not doing bad things right a better good better best things but sometimes you're placed in places and it wasn't your decision <laughs> mm -hmm. but i've been really blessed that was that was definitely a miracle if i had been stranded anywhere even five miles to one mile up or down from where i was it would have been with no one around. Mm. It was it was really a miracle. So my testimony is God is a God of miracles. I deal with miracles all the time. <laughs> Even when I do long drives and things, it's been a miracle to travel, but then to realize sometimes the grounding is necessary. <laughs> Hi, you too. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. did I get you to take chairs? Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. I picked Thank you. I picked Sorry the winning that. chair. <laughs> Beautiful chairs. Okay, Thank no you. problem. Nice and warm for the next person. <laughs> I warmed up the chair. And then, the day I was set apart as a missionary, well, and also was, we... Have you served more than once? One no, okay. not, not official, no. Life has put me in different missions. I studied to be a missionary because I was waiting till I was 21, and I was 10. 10, I got my blessing when I was 14. Oh, and it's on the September 17th is when I got my patriarchal blessing. <laughs> Close to your birthday. <laughs> so, that was, so, but ever since then and before then, I always wanted to serve a mission. And so I'd go to all the mission prep classes, and I'd help teach the lessons to different people who were getting baptized or planning to be. And then I would keep doing that. And everyone would come and go from their missions and come back and I'd still be in class. <laughs> and 
And it came to a point the teachers were saying, you should be teaching this class because I only have done it for two years. You've done it for seven. <laughs> I had done it till I was, yeah, 20. I was, well, yeah, I was 10. So it was actually 10 years. So then I was 20 and I went to Hawaii and I was in that class and that was a new class because they didn't know me. But then I knew all the answers and they said, you should be teaching this class. I just got back from my mission, but I didn't know all of these things and now you're, you're teaching me. Oh, yeah. I said, well, I've been on a mission for 10 years <laughs> to teach the, or learn these things. Yeah. So I learned I was helping a lot of the missionaries preparing for their missions or when they'd come home to stay active in their mission or in what their life mission is. Yeah. So it was different. It was a different experience. And then the age change happened. But at that point, that's when I was really tired. I had gotten tired. And I think that's when I, I took a, a break. But my mission was a lot, very different too. Because I did marry a non-member, but a good friend of mine from grade school. And that was different as well. But he was in the Navy. And so that was an interesting experience. You were in the Navy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For how long? Uh, till 2016. So that was 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, five years. So that was interesting. It was the submarines. He was in the nuclear engineering department of the submarines. And I realized that now looking back, I mean, we're divorced now, but looking back that we, he needed me there. The Lord needed me there for him and for me, but definitely seeing the different experiences of a submarine. That's very, very hard, especially for someone who doesn't have a family unit to support them. And I saw that with a lot of the other sailors that he, he interacted with and, and that I got to interact with because of that. And I really think that was, that was a different mission for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then coming to California. Coming to California was when I, I, um, I was able to be there for... Well, during Hawaii, I flew back when um, Grandma was sick and was there for her. And then Grandpa, he was going through heart surgeries and um, he had a hernia surgery. And I had a feeling I had to fly back to California. And I did. And I talked to my you brother. You had a feeling you should? Yes. It was a very strong prompting. I talked to my brother and said, I have everything here. It doesn't make sense to move from Hawaii. I've got my job down the street. I've got my apartment right here. I've got my dog. I've got, <laughs> I've got my car. Everything's working out. And why do I feel like I need to move to California? And he said, well, if you feel like you need to move to California, you need to move to California. And I said, you're right. And it worked out to move to California. And within a month, I got a new job, but that was the last time before it was Christmas when I saw Grandpa, before he passed away. I was on the phone with him. We had spent Christmas together, and we sing at the homeless shelter, and so we all were singing together and got to spend time with my grandfather and with, with Grandpa Tauri. And He died in the homeless center? No, he no no. Oh. <laughs> we sing at the homeless oh, shelter okay. every Christmas. We do it Christmas morning. We go over there and and be the Tauri family singers. And so we'd all go out and sing. 
Uh, Janine too. We'd we'd have Tahari time. Hi. And she even oh, Grandma was so good at sewing. She was the best. She was so she good at sewing. She took sewing in school. Um, they didn't offer it until the ninth grade. Mm. And so she took it and she was very good. Very good. She made everything. Mm-hmm. She, I wore a dress she made for Becky, her daughter, that still, that I wore. And I've had it ever since until it was stolen. <laughs> I had, when I moved to California, it was, it was, when it rains, it pours. It was, it was a lot of, of pouring. <laughs> I came to California when I knew I was meant to come to California. So I knew I needed to be here. And I go, um, and I see my grandfather, and then I call him when I, we, I got the job and um, told him, you know, I got the job, I'll see you next weekend because I have to work this one week and then I'll be back at the end of the week. And it was the last time I talked to him. Because my first day of my job, I'm walking in, and my mom actually shared a prompting she had with me of that when grandpa passed away yeah. she um she felt him sit next yeah. to her and tell her who to call first and all the way down of who to tell that he'd passed away and i was the last one and it worked out when she did tell me i was walking into my job brand new they don't know me <laughs> I'd met them the weekend before for the interview, and I now I'm told that he's he's gone, and I was sobbing, walking in the front door, and the doctor is so sweet, and now we're very close friends ever since, but she looked at me, and I was sobbing, she just met me, and, and I'm trying to come in to work with her. <laughs> It's okay, you sit down and I'll make you a tea. Here you go, here's some here's some chamomile tea. <laughs> just calm down and I'll work with the patient and you're okay, just just yeah. calm down. Just relax. <laughs> it was so, and I, oh, it was so, it was just so sad. It was so, but it worked, it, it would have been if mom had called any time earlier or any time later, I may have not gotten it because I was on a train that the phone calls cut out. And I was also running through puddles because it was it was really raining there too. And um, this just was a, that was a complete miracle. But then I when I drove down, I was helping clean out my, my grandpa's apartment instead of seeing him. But then you had the funeral. And how long had it been since you had seen him? Christmas. I'd seen him at Christmas, and then it was January, it was just after New Year's, so January maybe 5th, so I'd seen, I'd saw him on December 25th, so a couple weeks. We sang, we spent time together just sitting down and talking. So I wouldn't have seen that. That wouldn't have happened if I had been in Hawaii. I wouldn't. That that was a miracle. That was a prompting that you had to. You got to listen to those things. Yeah. For me, I've learned if you don't listen, you miss out mm -hmm. on a lot of unimportant things. And so I've learned to to listen to those things. Sometimes it's not conventional, like the whole. My husband type th that was not the normal thing, the <laughs> most, and yet that was something that made a miracle in, in many people's lives. Um, through our apartment, I was able to have a spare room for a baby girl, a woman, a girl that was a friend of mine, had gotten pregnant, but her roommates were going to kick her out because they didn't want a baby in the house, and I said, I. I am the oldest of a lot of... Come into my house. <laughs> come, come into my house. I need you, you... 
you're going to have a baby. <laughs> her mother came out to Hawaii, and she was all by herself in Hawaii. And her mother came out, and I said, I'm going to make you a barbecue, and you're going to sit in the pool. Because you're nine months, and the baby is ten pounds, and you're going to sit in the pool <laughs> and relax your joints. Because you're sore. And so I got to raise this little baby for four months that I wouldn't have had had I not had that experience with the Navy if I hadn't had Michael in my life if this it wouldn't have happened it just wouldn't have happened <laughs> it's an interesting thing the way the Lord works but he does love all of his children I know that so I got to love that little girl, and I still get to see her. She was born on November 9th. And then my other friend that I was dating, not anymore, but he has a child who was born the next day, on the 10th. And this is the same year I was married. <laughs> I was married, and I would never have had these children myself. But to realize that these kids needed me in their life has been quite miraculous. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Very interesting. It is very interesting. <sighs> Especially because at different points, the gospel hasn't been in these people's lives. interesting because when grandpa had his surgery I was able to donate blood for him you were mm -hmm. because he's the same blood type as me and my mom which isn't you know no relation to him biologically right but my mom is also able to be the same blood type as him my dad couldn't because he's not the same blood type <laughs> but we could <laughs> so, so during his surgery and then also now my cousin, my cousin Becky's daughter, Becky's second daughter, uh, Nicole, she has identical twin boys. And she was on bed rest for a long time. Before. Uh, what? Before the children were born or Correct. after? Correct. Before. Before. And um, they, because in Arizona, where she lives, they had said that only one can Say live. Say hello to California for me. I will. Thank I will. You. All the people there will remember you. <laughs> Maybe. Take care. You too. Yeah. So it was it was quite interesting. Um, I lost my train. Where'd my train go? I forgot my train. See, we all forget our train of thought. <laughs> I didn't mean oh. to, but boy, I sure do. <laughs> it's okay. Uh -huh. oh, well, very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So the boys, yes, the babies. Don't sit there. That's where. Maybe we better go in or we won't. What is it? Oh, it's 12.09. So, early 12.09. Well, we still have um, a good uh, 20 minutes, 15. Okay. 20 minutes. Okay. But my mom and I were able to donate to one of the boys who needed a blood transfusion. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> His baby, his name is Michael. She named them the angel Gabriel and Michael. Uh -huh. <laughs> she 
just going back to where...